Hello friends, this video is very long, about 25 minutes. That's because the first half of it is me disassembling and modifying the piece of the equipment I'll be demonstrating. The latter half of it is me demonstrating the equipment. If you're not so much into the electronics part of this channel, you might find that more interesting. Please check the description of the video for time indexes to the different parts. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the video. I was at the thrift store today and I found several pieces of really fascinating equipment which I'm going to share with you. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get the first one working, but I'll give it my best shot. And the second one is already working and hopefully I'll be able to show you how cool that one is. So the first one is a Sears electromechanical calculator. And this caught my eye because it is absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's gorgeous beyond words. I've not seen anything with this type of space age style. It's completely ridiculous. It's, it's absurd. Uh, I can't get over the orange. I can't get over the wood print. I, I can't get over any of it. This is also um, faux leather. Like it's got a, a sort of a leather uh, texture to it. It's obviously all made out of plastic and it looks... I would place this probably somewhere in the 60s because this seems to be ABS or PVC. It's not Bakelite, which is part of why it's in such good condition. There isn't a production date on the bottom. Uh, there is a model, and when I looked it up, I didn't really get much. Anyway, uh, it's made in Japan, which is not really all that surprising. And um, I was at least able to verify that it works by running the machine manually. Uh, and so I'm going to begin by demonstrating that. And then I'm going to try and get power hooked up to it. Because this is, being electromechanical, this is run off of a motor. It takes 110 volts. Uh, so I should be able to get this working as long as the motor isn't blown. The other part of it is this has no readout. So if you're not familiar with mechanical calculators, uh, they don't really show you what you're doing. They just print what you're doing, at least this era and price point. I, I'm not actually sure. I want to say that higher end ones would show you as well as print out the numbers you're working with. But um, as it stands, uh, you just have to enter blindly and then you see what you put in when you hit the button to proceed. Uh, and you can reset your input by pulling this back here. So this is how you enter numbers, and you can see this moves, but there's no indication of what you put in. When it gets to the end of the travel, you just stops entering things. So my understanding is you can slide this back in order to re-enter numbers that you maybe got wrong, but you can't actually see what you put in. Um, so beyond that, it won't do anything without power, or at least not without the gear train being moved. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. If you've never seen an electromechanical calculator before, this is going to be quite a wild ride. So there it is. Now, I am not actually an engineer. Um, I can't tell you how this works enough to make a convincing demonstration, you know, on paper or an animation or anything. And there are other resources that will explain how this stuff works. But this is a mechanical implementation of an adding machine. I don't know whether it uses binary internally or works in decimal or anything like that. Um, what I can tell you is it, it is a nightmare of camshafts and uh, Pauls and followers. It's really, uh, every one of these is, is a complete, it's genius really, it's very brilliant stuff. I mean, if you look in here, it's just solid. It's just linkages all the way through springs levers all kinds of things so rather than try and dig into that i'm just going to show you a little bit of how it should look when it's operating here in the back is where the power comes in at this strange three prong connector here and that's why i need to modify it in order to use it because i don't have that cable and i can't figure out how to search for one online i've seen them before but uh, they're just there's no term for them they were only used on some weird old equipment. So after giving up on that, I decided I'm just gonna modify it. Uh, so that power goes into a little hobby motor, if you will, which is right here. And uh, one thing I noticed is it looks like back here, uh, there is a resistor, which is probably bleeding off some of the input voltage. Um, that's a little weird. I'm not sure why they're doing that. That motor has a drive pinion right there. And that drive pinion drives this wheel here, and everything else comes from there. So that one motor driving that one gear is turning a shaft, and then that shaft has linkages going all over the place. It's got other gears and cams that interact with the rest of this machinery. Um, so that drive line is able to power the whole machine. So that means that if I operate that manually, the machine will actually operate just very, very slowly. See that shadow? That's the fan on the motor running. So I'm not sure if I'm running it the right way, but that should tell me. Let's see. 
I believe I'm running it the right way. The fan blades be pushing air into the motor, which I think is the right direction. So just to show you how this would look running in sort of slow motion, uh, let's enter a number. And now if I press plus, you see it's locked down now. So I can't do anything else until this operation completes. Normally this would be very quick, but it keeps you from entering digits while it's still calculating. So if I run the motor, okay, you see here, these start to turn and here it comes. Yep, okay, it now has 10 on the dial, I believe. And then if it keeps going, it rolls it over, smashes this into here, and the paper would be between those things. So it's just smashed the uh, paper through the ink ribbon into the print head, so it's written 10 onto the paper. Now it completes, and then it resets everything, rolls it forward, and this returns in order to clear the input. Now let's add another uh, 10, add, Easy, easy, e oh, okay, there we go. So the cam just engaged, so now it's very hard to turn. Oh, there we go. Ah. Okay, and looks like it's still 10. Ah. Oh, there we go. Takes a lot of force to operate that. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'm using it correctly. I guess I would find out better if it was running at full speed. Let's enter a big number. Okay, add. Here we go. Oh, there we go, yeah. You can see these all spun to different positions. And smash. And then they're all gonna reset. Oh, oh, that's really hard. Ah, there we go. Now, to the best of my knowledge, um, I, I guess I have a number stored in there now. So I think if I slide this over, I think that'll clear it. Oh, okay, I think I do a total. I think that'll clear it. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Ooh. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Oh. Boy, howdy. Takes a lot of force to reset those digits. All right, I'm not sure how good a demonstration that was, but I hope you at least enjoyed watching me grunt my way through using a calculator. So this has uh, addition, subtraction, it looks like, and... I don't think this is a multiply feature. I think it's something else. I think that the, the X had not yet started meaning multiply on these. Um, so I'll find out once I get it running under the motor because I haven't been able to get that to do anything when running it by hand. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to get this removed and connect an ordinary 110 volt cable. Now sadly, that's easier said than done. I have not been able to find a way to get an angle on this guy right here to take these screws out without taking out a bunch of stuff I won't be able to put back in, and I can't bring myself to damage this by cutting those connectors off. So I think I'm gonna see if I've got a little tiny screwdriver I could fit in there. Ooh, oh. Ah. All right, at least this one I can do with the precision screwdriver. Now the other one, Probably a bit tougher. Let me try taking this ink spool off. Maybe I can do it that way. Okay. I think I've just about. Ah, yeah, there we go. You want to you come off, buddy? So this is awful. All this does is release this sort of rubbery cover, and it just doesn't want to come off now. And I can tell it's binding on the wires. I think part of the problem is this ground wire, so let's get that released. So now that that's straighter, hopefully it'll fight us less, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Eh. Oh, there, there, there we go. Whew. Bit of an odd wiring job here. We've got two wires on the top terminal, uh, ground right in the center and one black wire down here. Uh, I'll do some digging, but my suspicion is that that's hot, obviously ground, and that's neutral. Okay, actually, something horrifying has happened. Let me reveal to you something absolutely terrifying. It's not a black wire. It's a yellow wire. And that right there, that's a diode. 
There's a diode on that lead. So, what the hell? This says that it runs on 110 volts, 60 hertz. So, I don't think that there was an external power supply, but... I have some thoughts. Let's try and apply some sense here. So, think about this. If this is polarized, well, and it's not really, but it kind of is. This AC is not really polarized, but it is. I'm just thinking about if I had to pick one of these to be the neutral, which one would it be? And it seems to me that it needs to be the top one. And here's my reasoning. If the diode were on the neutral line, and neutral is theoretically common to ground, then if you lost the neutral, then you would have the diode out of circuit now because now the voltage would be flowing to ground. And yes, that's supposed to be a, a, a failure condition, uh, but my thought is they wouldn't have done that. They would have put the diode on the hot side so that even if you lose the neutral, you don't lose the ground and potentially blow out whatever in here wants DC. The power to the entire thing is controlled over here. This micro switch close, or I'm sorry, leaf switch actually, closes to turn the motor on so that the motor's not running continuously. It's only running when something's needed. So I believe that if I enter digits, nothing happens. But if I request an operation, such as an addition, bink, that turns on. This would have to be the hot lead, I'm quite certain. And that's yellow going back to here where the diode is, and then red going to the motor. Also, the fact that it's red going into the motor also supports this being the hot side. So yeah, I'm going to say that I want to put neutral on the top and then hot on the bottom. By the way, I, and I got to tell you, I would really love to get at that motor and find out what the specifications are, but it's not an option. And the reason is I've taken these apart before, just once or twice. And because of the design of the thing, the motor is just buried, buried, buried. Now, I will never take apart one of these again. I don't have enough hours in my life. Getting that out would take hours of work, and I would not be able to put it back together when I was done. That would be the end of this calculator. So I'm not gonna, um, as curious as I am, I'm just gonna go for the gold, try and get this thing working. So it's time for that old workhorse, the Weller station. Gotta go get my sponge wet. Well, this heats up, I'm gonna tell you a real gross story. So. If you have sensitive stomach or if there's kids in the room, send them away. So when I was a kid, I was real gross and I was into electronics. And if you're not familiar with soldering, you have to wet this sponge so that you can wipe the tip of your soldering iron on it periodically. But when I was a kid, I was incredibly lazy and I really didn't want to go and wet that sponge. I just didn't want to get up and do it. So on more than one occasion, I just poured some Mountain Dew on there because that's what I had. And I'll tell you, it did work. Oh, damn. I used the wrong tip. I need the big tip. Crap. Now that's a tip that can do some damage. The thing about these soldering tips is it doesn't matter how long they've been sitting in the holder. It doesn't matter how many days it's been since you soldered. When you go to pick one up, your hand goes, eh, Because eh, you're just convinced that's just going to be blistering hot. I mean, it's a good instinct to have, you know. Boy, this is like a brand new tip. I've never used this. Where was this hiding? Okay, I should do it. Just need to give a little counter traction here. There they come. Oh, 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 it's gotta be, oh, it's going through a hole. Okay, that's what's up. Oh, there we go. Second one looks a little bit harder, but I guess I'll grab it over here. All right, there it goes. Oh, there we go. Okay, last one. Oh, that's gonna be tough, actually. The tip there, it's actually Tip of the wire, tip of the lead, actually bent over. Let's get the uh, precision screwdriver in there. Give it a twist. Right, there we go. And there it is. All right, and it's out. Woohoo! Clap sync. All right, let's just get that nasty plastic contraption off of there if we can. That, that should come out easy enough, right? Uh, uh. All right, got it. OK, 
Okay, now we're in a bit of a pickle because these are not well insulated where they are, just hanging out like this. So here's what I want to do. So our donor cable here is going to be the huge IEC. Let's go ahead and get the end off this guy first off. Strip. Ah, the end of this exposed. All right, typically white is neutral in most color codes. Green's obviously ground, black is hot. So we're gonna go ahead and just wire nut the top two together. The reason I'm doing that is because rather than you know breaking this connector off and putting another one in, is if I eventually find one of these cords, I'd like to restore this to its original design. That's how I'd really prefer to do it. I need to put a strain relief knot in this. There we go. Okay. That'll basically just guarantee that this can't uh, pull on the wires in here and put tension on them. And that way, um, somebody tugging on the cable will maybe break the case, but it won't rip the wiring out of the motor, which is a much worse situation to be in. That was weird and crappy to get on, but it's on now. All right, so finally we have to attach this guy down here with the diode, and that sucks because I do have to figure out how to insulate that in midair, and I'm also gonna have to solder it. So I think in this case, we need some heat shrink. All right, I just found this in my electrical drawer. I'm pretty sure it's heat shrink, and I'm pretty sure it's enough of it. So let's hope I'm right. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a touch of solder on this, so I can hook this connector, or uh, hook this lead and make it a connector, I should say. Ow. Boy, that's toasty. Excellent, that should do. Just wanna do the same down here with the diode. Just hook that right over. That diode's been stressed a lot in its life, and it might be at its elastic limit, so it might break if I were to do that again, but it's just a generic diode. I, I can easily replace it. Not a big deal. Let's get this down here, hook it. All right, there we go. All right, this situation is difficult, but I think I can do it. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to hook some solder as well. Just get that into the party here. Curl it around there. All right. Now let's just reflow it. And that did soak into the conductors as designed. We've got our joint. Okay, let's see if we can slip that heat shrink over there. Just gonna hold that right there. Just use the heat from the iron. I hate using the iron itself to shrink heat shrink. It's not a good way to do it, but given the circumstances, I don't want to blow a bunch of hot air into this thing. Um, there's no telling what it could do, so I feel a lot more secure about this approach. Let's just give this a tug. Okay, it's not going anywhere. Let's go ahead and put the ground wire back on. In theory, our electrical work is done. I just need to get this ribbon back on here. So I had to take that off. Okay, so first things first, it comes off that roller and it goes under and around there. And then it goes under and around that roller and then spools up some more. This here, that'll allow that in. Let it engage the cams and I think I got it. Uh, that wasn't so hard. So assuming I'm not dreadfully wrong about anything, like um, I didn't get the polarity backwards in a way where the polarity matters, and assuming that uh, this really does run on 110 volts, then it should work now. Okay, um, let's hope I was right. <sighs> Whoa, yeah!
Excellent. So I don't have any actual receipt paper, but I'm going to go find some paper and put it in here and, and see if it'll print on that. Ah, this is a uh, fairly receipty. Man, quite a smell coming out of that thing. Uh, hope I didn't mess this up. All right, there we go. Okay, um, I'm gonna clear it and do a total. Okay, and then uh, oh, there's something there. Uh, let's do all uh, all ones. So it's all ones right now. So now I'm gonna add uh, another all ones. Okay. And I think that it only shows me what I put in. So now let's, if we if we don't put in any numbers and then hit this button, it should subtotal. And there it is, all twos. And then I believe if we hit total, okay, that's all twos. And now I believe it's cleared the memory. Yep, we're back to zero. So now let's do some actual uh, normal numbers and see what we get. Um, so let's add, and this is an adding machine, mind you. So that means the first two positions are cents and then the following ones are dollars. I'm not sure that matters, but uh, in terms of how it actually does the calculation, but that's just how you're supposed to do it. So I believe that means if we want to enter uh, 1550, then we do 0551. Well, something didn't go right. Apparently, I'm a, I'm, I'm a dipshit. I don't know how to use this thing. All right, let me clear it out. Now, let me just enter it normally and see if that's how it works. So, 1550. Okay, there it is. And then let's add another 1550. And then subtotal. $31. Now, what's X? Uh, I wonder if it's really a multiply. So let's do, well, let's do 2x. Now that's, I'm not sure how that works, because now it's just down. So I'm just going to hit subtotal. I guess I need a manual for this thing. Anyway, I want to try subtraction. So let's do, uh, you know, 1550. Add, okay. And then um, 1550. Correct. Total. Oh, I think I had some crap in the buffer. So let's try this again. 1550 add. 1550 subtract. Total. Nothing. Cool. Ooh, can we get negative numbers? What if we do uh, 1550 subtract right from the get-go uh, and then uh, add uh, $10? Oh it, it, oh, it it underflowed. See, when I entered a negative number right at the beginning, it rolled this around to the maximum possible number and then subtracted from that because it's just, is what it is. Wow. Now, since this is working so well, I'm actually going to open it up and see if we can watch it run live. Oof, that motor. It doesn't smell happy. I'm gonna try and grab a slow motion with my Android phone and get that into the video.
So there it is. What a beautiful piece of equipment. I really love this thing. I've always wanted one, but I could never find one I was really that excited to get. Normally, they look so nightmarish inside. I mean, even more nightmarish than this one. That the idea of something going wrong with them just is too terrifying to contemplate. But what's fortunate is that this one's in really good condition. And that makes me think that even if I were to use this thing for everyday calculations, you know, like a steampunk dweeb or something like that, uh, it would probably hold up pretty well. It looks new enough that it was probably built after they'd figured out a lot of the things that made the older ones break. So I'm guessing this is a pretty late version of the technology. Um, that makes me think that it's, it's going to have a pretty long life. So I figured it was worth picking up, especially for $7. wasn't even half off day, and I still got it for a good price. Uh, so it looks like I won't be able to show you the other device that I picked up, uh, which is super cool, and you'll get to see it in another video. Don't worry, because this ended up being uh, plenty satisfying enough for one night. So thank you very much for joining me. Take it easy. By the way, you probably think that I didn't notice that I left the clip off of the ink ribbon. Don't worry, I did. But it just didn't fit the flow of the video to admit that I'm going to have to take this thing apart again to reinstall that. And getting that case on and off really sucks.